Erosion means wearing of rocks. This wearing takes place due to friction and scraping. The movement of wind, water and ice causes friction with the rocks. This leads to the erosion of rocks. Therefore, wind, rivers, glaciers, sea waves and groundwater are called agents of erosion. The work of wind, river and glacier is controlled by the climate of the region. Sea waves and groundwater work in the region wherever they exist. The ability of wind, river and glaciers to bring about erosion is different because wind, river and glaciers are in gaseous, liquid and solid form respectively. Their density differs. Their velocity to move also differs considerably. So we get different types of landforms according to their work. The cover of the rocks on the surface of the earth keeps on getting removed through erosion and transportation. These processes together are referred to as the processes of denudation. So children, the processes of erosion and denudation are now clear to us. Let us now study the work of the river. But before we get into its details, let us try to understand how is a river actually formed. Some of the rainwater falling on the ground seeps through it and some gets evaporated. The remaining water starts flowing along the slope of the land from higher to the lower ground. Depending on their volume of water, such flows of water are named rills, gullies, streams, rivers, etc. Now coming to the work of the river. The intensity of the work of a river depends on the following factors. Slope of the land, velocity of the flow, type of rocks, discharge in the river and the amount of load. Let us see how the erosion is carried on by a river. The beds of the river as well as its banks are cut by the speedily flowing stream of water as well as the load moving with it. Moreover, the sand, stone, etc. in the flow also break as they collide. Students, now let us get to know about the landforms formed by the erosion of a river. 1. Gorge In mountainous areas, a river flows with great speed. Therefore, the bed of the river gets eroded more than its banks. This gives rise to a gorge that has steep banks and a narrow bed. For example, the gorges of river Vaitarna in Thane district and river Ulhas in Raigad district. 2. V-shaped valley Over a period of time, the amount of load in the flow starts increasing. More and more energy of the river gets consumed in transporting the material. As a result, there is less erosion of the bed. However, the erosion along the banks and the slopes of the valley increases. Hence, the slope recedes and the valley with near vertical sides becomes wider, resembling the letter V. For example, V-shaped valleys in the western Ghats. 3. Potholes at times, the rocks in the riverbed have joints. Stones and pebbles get trapped in such joints. Due to the stream of water, the trapped material starts moving in a circular manner. This leads to the formation of a depression at such a place. Such depressions are called potholes. For example, in the bed of river Kukadi at Nigoj at Ahmadnagar district, and in the bed of river Indrayani at Bhigadewadi in Pune district, such potholes are formed on a large scale. 4. Waterfall Water flowing over a hilly region at times cascades down a cliff. This gives rise to the formation of a waterfall. In some areas, the hard and soft rocks lie next to each other. 
the soft rocks get eroded faster than the hard ones. This leads to the difference in the height along the riverbed and a waterfall is formed. For example, Gersopa Falls on Sharavati River and Dhuadhar Falls on Narmada River are famous. Now that we are through with the erosional work of a river, let us talk about the processes of transportation and deposition carried by a river. The eroded material gets transported with the flow of water. The velocity of the river gets reduced as the land slope decreases. Under such conditions, its capacity to carry the load decreases and the river drops it down. Such a process of load getting settled on the course of the river is called deposition. Following are the landforms formed due to the work of transportation and deposition by the river. 1. Meanders and Oxbow Lakes 2. Flood Levees and Flood Plains 3. Delta Let us study them in detail. 1. Meanders and Oxbow Lake When the amount of load in a river increases considerably, the river fails to transport all the material. Small elevated portions or obstacles can cause a change in the direction of the flow. Under such conditions, the outer bank or the bank of the river towards which the flow is directed gets eroded and the material is deposited at the inner or the opposite bank. If these conditions occur again and again, the river develops a zigzag path. Such a zigzag path is called as meandering path and each loop or curve along the path is called a meander. When the turn in the path becomes acute, the limbs of a turn come very close. During flood, as the force of water increases, the river skips the meandering path and follows a straight path. The abandoned portion of the loop develops into a lake which is called an oxbow lake. In the North Indian plains, the river Ganga and its tributaries have developed numerous such lakes. Many such lakes have also been formed by the river Brahmaputra in the state of Assam. 2. Flood levees and flood plains Deposition along the banks of river leads to the formation of flood plains and flood levees. During the floods, finer materials are moved away from the banks whereas the coarser material gets settled at the bank itself. On either side of the river, plains are formed due to the deposition of materials. Such plains are called flood plains. The elevation along the bank increases due to deposition of coarser material. This gives rise to hillock-like forms parallel to the river banks. These are called flood levees. Such flood plains and levees are seen in the flood-prone areas of River Ganga. 3. Delta When the river flows into the sea, the sea waves offer resistance to the flow of river water. As a result, the load brought by the river gets deposited at its mouth. This leads to the formation of obstacles in the flow and as a result, the water gets bifurcated into a number of channels. These channels are called distributaries. The deposition leads to the formation of a triangular plane which is called a delta. Extensive deltas are formed along the mouths of Ganga, Godavari and Kaveri rivers. After learning about the work of the river, we will now get into the details of the work of the glacier. But what is a glacier? In high altitude areas and the areas of high elevation, precipitation is in the form of snowfall. Over a period of time, the accumulated snow turns into ice. As a result of the pressure, the accumulated ice starts moving in the direction of the slope. Such a flow of ice 
moving in the direction of slope is called a glacier. As the ice moving in a glacier is in the solid state, its velocity is very low. The velocity of the glacier depends on the thickness of the accumulated ice, the temperature and the slope of the land. Glaciers also perform the work of erosion, transportation and deposition. Though the velocity of a glacier is very low, the mass of the water in the solid form is very high. Therefore, glaciers cause a considerable amount of erosion. Let us try to understand the various landforms formed as a result of the erosional work of a glacier. Let us begin with cirque. Ice accumulated in the depressions near the base of the mountain slopes starts flowing. This causes erosion of the floor and the sides of the depressions as well as of the mountain slope. Over a period of time, such a depression assumes the shape of a huge easy chair. This landform is called a cirque. Next is a ret and Matterhorn. Intensive erosion of the portion between two adjoining cirques leads to the formation of chains of hills with sharp cliff bases. Such a chain is called a ret. If cirques develop along three or four sides of that mountain, the slopes of that mountain become very steep and the top portion appears like a horn. It is called a Matterhorn. Next comes U-shaped valley. Due to the erosion by a glacier, the basal portion of the valley becomes flat and broad while the side slopes become steep. As the valley bottom lowers down, it assumes the shape of the letter U. Hence, these valleys are called U-shaped valleys. Coming to the hanging valley. The ice moving through the tributary glaciers is much less than that in the main glacier. As a result, erosion by the tributary glaciers is much less as compared to the main glacier. As the bases of the tributary glaciers are not lowered to the level of the main glacier, they remain at some elevation above the bed of the main glacier. After the ice melts, these valleys of tributary glaciers appear to be hanging over the main glacier. Such valleys are called hanging valleys. Let us now learn about the transportation and deposition done by a glacier. The load transported by glaciers is called moraine. The load transported is more at the base and the banks of the glacier. After the ice is converted into water, one finds that larger and coarser moraines are deposited at shorter distances and the finer moraine is carried over a longer distance. Following landforms are formed by the depositional work of glaciers. 1. Moraine There are four types of moraines depending on the location. Ground moraine it is the material deposited at the base of a glacier. Lateral moraine. It is the material deposited along the banks of a glacier. Medial moraine. It is found in the central part of the glacier after the confluence of two glaciers. It is formed out of the side moraine of the inner bank of the two glaciers. Terminal moraine. It is found at the end where a glacier turns into a stream of water. The water flow cannot carry the material brought by the glaciers. Hence, the moraine is found in a huge quantity at this location. As this moraine is found at the terminal part of the glacier, it is called terminal moraine. 2. Drumlins Huge heaps of ground moraines deposited in the form of egg-shaped hills are called drumlins. This feature is found in the Northern Ireland and North European plains. Eskers At times, the moraine gets deposited in the form of long, winding, narrow hills with steep slopes. 
These are called eskers. Now, let us see the work of wind. The work of wind is predominantly found in the hot deserts and semi-arid regions. The characteristics of these regions are as follows. Hot deserts are generally found close to the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. The mean annual rainfall in the hot deserts is 250 millimeters or less. As the evaporation is higher than the rainfall, the availability of water is low. Due to low rainfall, the vegetal cover is negligible. Lack of obstacles makes the work of wind effective. Wind also performs the work of erosion, transportation and deposition. Let us see how the erosion is carried on by wind. Wind carries sand, pebbles, etc. As they strike and scratch the rocks, their elevated and basal parts get eroded. At times, sand particles are lifted due to the forceful winds and are carried over long distances. Following are the landforms formed due to the erosional work of wind. 1. Deflation hollows The sand in the hot deserts is lifted and carried away over long distances by the wind. A depression is formed in the area from where the sand is carried away. Such depressions are called deflation hollows. The Katara depression in Egypt is a deflation hollow. 2. Mushroom rock The high rising rocks in the path of the wind are attacked by the sand that moves with the wind. The particles moving along the ground are larger but their velocities are low. The particles at medium height are smaller but their velocities are high. Hence, they have a greater impact. As a result, the portions of rock at medium height are eroded more and the rock as a whole gets the shape of a mushroom. These types of rocks are called mushroom rocks. 3. Yardangs the softer rocks exposed on the surface are eroded to considerable extent by the sand particles moving with the wind. The harder rocks present in between are eroded to a lesser extent. The eroded portions of softer rocks appear like elongated troughs and the harder rocks appear as elevated portions. This landform is called Yardang. Now let us study about the transportation and deposition carried by wind. A large amount of sand is carried away by the wind. The transportation of sand particles by wind depends upon their size. Very fine particles are carried over a distance of thousands of kilometers. Comparatively, the larger and heavier particles are moved to shorter distances. The deposition of sand carried by wind gives rise to a variety of landforms. They are as follows. 1. Sand dunes The changes in the velocity of wind leads to variations in its capacity to carry material. The velocity of wind gets reduced also due to obstacles. As a result, the sand gets deposited. Such deposition leads to the formation of sand hills. These sand hills are called sand dunes. Two main types of sand dunes are identified on the basis of their shape. They are Barchan and Seif. 1. Barchan Due to an obstacle in the path of the wind or due to the lowering of its velocity, the sand moving with it gets dropped at some places. The heap of the sand over a period of time starts getting the shape of a crescent. These are called barchans. The barchan's slope that faces the wind is gentle, whereas the opposite slope is steep. Such hills can be seen in large numbers in the great Indian desert 
in Rajasthan. 2. Seif In Arabian language, the word Seif means a sword. These types of dunes are developed due to the deposition of sand in an elongated shape in the direction of the wind. Generally, their height is low, but they can spread over a distance of few kilometers. 3. Loess Plain Very fine particles of sand and silt are moved away up to thousands of kilometers by wind and are deposited far away from the deserts. The material thus deposited is called loess. At times, such sand deposition gives rise to extensive plains. The loess plain in China is formed through the deposition of very fine sand particles transported from the Gobi Desert. Its area is approximately 6.5 lakh square kilometers.